Well, what am I doing here? Oh, sorry. Well, that was uh, Rhapsody in Blue. I wanted to play a little Rhapsody in Blue for you because this is a trumpet that um, every one of my trumpet has a story. And this one here is a very special story. It's a 1920 con. Now, Rhapsody in Blue was written by George Gershwin in 1923. It was a part of a competition that he... Somebody had entered it into, actually it was Paul Whiteman, who was the leader of a, of a sort of salon, big band orchestra at that time. And uh, there was supposed to be this competition where there's going to be on the jury people like Igor Stravinsky, where you, uh, if the new jazz music was as good as classical music and whatever. And George Gershwin was very successful as a popular music composer and... He, I don't think he'd, he still hadn't written Rhapsody, uh, he still hadn't written Porgy and Bess, but Rhapsody in Blue was a, actually a piece that he'd written um, for this competition in 1923. Actually, his brother was reading the newspaper, and, uh, uh, and uh, Gershwin, uh, George is playing pool with his friend, and, and Ira says, I heard his brother, he says, Hey man, I didn't know that you were writing a piece for this competition. Well, when did you enter that? And George says, "What you what you talking about?" Well, Paul Whiteman had seen him on a train station uh, 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 between trains in Philadelphia. He was on his way to either in, was in either Grand Central in New York or going to Philadelphia, and asked him if he would be interested in writing a piece for piano and orchestra for for a, a thing. And Whiteman had already entered him just because he said he was interested in doing it. So he hadn't even thought about it. And he had to write the piece in three weeks. So he wrote the piece for actually two pianos and had Whiteman then do the arrangement for his own ensemble. And, uh, but at that time, in 1923, they were playing trumpets more like this. Uh, there, were, there were other symphonic trumpets. I have a trumpet. Uh, this is an, a Kahn trumpet again, C.G. Kahn Company. And you see it's all hand engraved. Wonderful trumpet. And it has this very special sound. And I recorded Rhapsody in Blue on it when I first got it. But I, I have to tell you the story about... Well, let me just play a little Rhapsody in Blue, the introduction of it anyway. Sorry, I forgot what fingering that high F is. You can play it open also. It just sort of came out anyway. Yeah. Um, the thing is, you can do something with this trumpet that you can't do with the modern trumpet. You can play so soft and round like a cornet because it's a very conical bell, and you can play brilliant and, uh, and uh, with a lot of intensity like a trumpet, uh, not as much as the, the big band trumpet the, with the vocal bell that I played before, but, I mean, this is this... This is his dad, and the other one is his son, 20 years apart in construction and concept of sound. But uh, a young guy named Bernd Fry brought me this trumpet. It was all black, and I didn't even know it was hand engraved. And he said, oh, I got this old trumpet, you know, and, and uh, I, I know that you like old instruments and whatever, and you're interested in, in you know, historical trumpet and whatever. And, uh, well, I'd like to give you this trumpet on permanent loan if you would give me lessons. I don't have the money to pay you but I could give you this trumpet as, as payment on permanent loan. I said, Bernd, uh, I understand. Here's the problem. When you play a trumpet, you have a trumpet and you spend time with it, it's like, you know, like you develop a relationship with it. It's like a love relationship. It's like a, your, it becomes your girlfriend kind of thing. And uh, you spend a lot of time with it, you nurture it and whatever. And I mean, you can take a look at here. You can see this. Uh, it's beautiful. Look here. You can see this little uh, drawbridge, a castle with a drawbridge and everything, and it's hand, uh, hand engraved by uh, some Czech brothers that went to uh, over to the United States and did this for them. And uh, Bohemian, I guess, or Burmish. And uh, he said, yeah, well, what are we going to do? I mean, I've only got this trumpet. I said, I'll tell you. 
You tell me how many lessons you think the trumpet is worth. And when I've given you these trumpet lessons, then the trumpet is mine. I don't want it to be lent to me. Did I ever tell you this story? No. Yeah, you did. I know. And it's a true story. Mm -hmm. And after I'd given him these lessons, and he told me how many lessons he thought it would be worth. I'm not going to tell you how many it was. I, I don't remember. 20 lessons or something like that. Then, um, you know, 20 lessons at 100 euro a piece, uh, 2,000 euro mm -hmm. uh, is what I paid for the, the trumpet in time and lessons for him. But... Um, I don't regret that at all. The vowels are very old and very worn, but um, people said, oh, you've got to do this and we've got to do that, and they'll, they'll be leaking and whatever. So I thought, hmm. You know, the instrument is gold-plated and was gold-plated originally. Fire gold-plated, what they call in German, Feuer vergoldet. Hmm. And, uh, but the vowels were leaking, and they were talking about, oh, you have to you know, nickel-plate the valves and whatever because they don't have any more nail. And I said, no, no, no. I'm going to take it to my jeweler and I'm going to have him gold plate the valves. If you gold plate a valve, you have to understand that gold is actually just a liquid at a state of, of suspension because it's, you know, when it, it's cold. If you it, heat gold up, it becomes a liquid. And I said, what will happen is that the gold will then find its place around the valve holes and whatever to tighten it up and where it's not, not necessary there, it will be rubbed off. So it will, it will find its own place on the valve to make the valve tight. Oh, everybody's going, oh, you can't do that, that's dumb shit, you know. And I, I, when I get an idea, I get an idea. And uh, the valves, I mean, the valves are tight because of it. You can maybe hear it plop, but the valves are tight because I mean, they could be gold plated again. The thing is that gold, if you gold plate something, you can always gold plate it again. The gold just adds on to itself. And then if they're a little tight, then you just you have to you know, lap them in for a while. So this is important for people to understand that an old trumpet is not a bad trumpet. And a trumpet that has leaking valves can be fixed. And, and uh, you can do something about it. Take the dents out of an old trumpet and, and clean it up, and it can be a better trumpet than the newest trumpet that you can buy. And there's no way you can find a trumpet that sounds like this. get the music and play some for it but I think you get a good idea of uh, of the of the melody and of the character of the sound and play so soft with it and I'm using a a, a La Tromba mouthpiece that I, a medium weight La Tromba mouthpiece some of the things you've seen me before play like this is a heavyweight mouthpiece and fitting to the heavyweight receiver and um, this is an interesting trumpet also that uh, it's one of these trumpets that, it, this trumpet's 20 years old. When it's polished, it looks like a new penny. But um, the guy that I sold it to, um, didn't want it anymore. He's got old, and he's not practicing, and he, he wanted and he wanted to sell it. And I said, well, great, you know. What he want for it, and I made him a deal and whatever. But I polished it up, and the next time someone came by, was looking for a trumpet, he wanted to give me four thousand euro for the trumpet. And I thought, what, you know? And the used trumpet, four thousand euro, and he, no, new trumpets usually cost less than that. Really good trumpets. But um, the, this is such a good trumpet, I couldn't sell it to him. I mean, it's not that I wouldn't like to have the four thousand euro. Four thousand euro is a lot of money these days, but. It's a power trumpet. 
you can sit in a in a big band or you can sit in a, a symphony orchestra or in a concert band or just play outside Aratunian. And you can see that Sean's holding his ears. I mean, you might not get it on the tape or on the, you know, on this digital recorder, but this trumpet will knock your socks off. It's got so much power. And I didn't realize that I'd actually sold it to the guy. I said, uh, he wanted the ring. He's a small guy, had a small hand. He wanted the ring moved. And I said, well, okay, then come back on Monday. And in the meantime, I tried it in a rehearsal. You were there. Were you there? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I tried in a rehearsal in a church, in the, in the residence church, in the, uh, in the palace here, in the Würzburg Palace. And uh, he called me up. He said, when can I come by and pick up the trumpet? I said, well, I got some good news and I got some bad news for you. <laughs> he said, oh, well, okay, well, tell me, tell me the bad news uh, first. Uh, the bad news is, uh, no, the good news is, he said, oh, good news first. I said, well, the good news is that I'm in love. He said, oh, well, that's fine for you. You're in love, great. Uh, what's the bad news? I said, the bad news is, uh, is bad news for you. I'm in love with the trumpet that you want to pick up. I cannot sell it to you. He said, what? You know, I thought we had a deal of 4,000 euro and whatever. I said, yeah, I'm sorry. But I played the trumpet, and now I know what it is. This is a handmade, and this is one of, this is a Heinz Pogensay special. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the weight on that. Oh, yeah. That's a real. That's the real McCoy. This has. This oh. doesn't have special American valves. This is German valves, and these are very. And these are Bauerfine valves. They, you can't buy them anymore. Mm -hmm. And these plates and whatever. This is all hand done by Heinz. Look, you look at look, look at the trouble he went to turning yeah. all these things. Every ferrule is done like, like it's. You know, he's making a trumpet for his mother, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that's Heinz. And it weighs a ton. It weighs about twice as much as a normal trumpet. I mean, really. Mm. Yeah. I mean, it, it's very heavy. It's a very heavy trumpet. And that's why, Mike, you better go over there with a the microphone. I wanted to play some soft low notes for you to understand that I'm not only interested in playing high loud notes and I'm not trying to impress you, I'm more talking about how I play or whatever. Uh, I'm talking about what the trumpet is about as an aesthetic, an, an aesthetic instrument to express music at an intensive emotional level. And that's the story of this trumpet that I sold and couldn't sell. And this one that I paid 20 lessons for. Till next time. Bye.